now that's the big transformation and now like I said they go they go to start their advanced training so in boot camp you don't you're not learning you're learning some technical stuff but you're basically just learning a new attitude right you're learning to be a marine and then they go from there they go to a place called new river where they're gonna do some more training and they're gonna start learning to be actual fighting Marines so here we go back to the book it's talking about new river here the only talent was that of the foot soldier the only tool the handgun here the cultivated, the oblique, and the delicate soon perished like gardenias in the desert. So we're starting to get into some hard living, and they form up into companies, and he ends up in, in H Company, 2nd Battalion, 1st Marine Regiment, and they get some other veterans that come to start help them prepare for combat and here's what he says about that the first and this is the first marine regiment the first also received a vital leavening of veteran ncos that's non-commissioned officers so these are like the mid-level enlisted guys that run the show they would teach us they would train us they would turn us into fighting troops from them we would learn our weapons. From them, we would take our character and temper. They were the old breed. And we were the new, the volunteer youths who had come from the comfort of home to the hardship of war. For the next three years, all of these would be my comrades, the men of the 1st Marine Division. And that's true they you know they always try and take veterans I shouldn't say always because actually in D-Day they wanted a bunch of new guys they wanted people that hadn't been in combat before but at, you know in the SEAL teams we do that when I got back from Ramadi with my task unit they took my task unit we didn't and they split them up all put them in all different task units mm-hmm. so we had all these guys with all this experience going to these other task units right. this is pretty normal yeah. And that's where the true learning comes from, right? You're gonna get that that face-to-face, that, that hands-on, and that true connection to what's going on overseas. And here's some of the things that they did. Back to the book, Dr- gun drill and nomenclature. Know your weapon, know it intimately, know it with almost the insight of its inventor. Be able to take it apart blindfolded or in the dark to put it together. Be able to recite mechanically a detailed description of the gun's operation. Know the part played by every member of the squad, from gunner down to the unfortunates who carried the water can or the machine gun boxes, as well as their own rifles. So you're going to learn this weapon like better than better than the inventor is what they're saying. That's how well you need to know it. And you know what? I believe that. That inventor doesn't do what these guys do with that machine gun. I'll tell you, if you, if you, like the guys that I, the pig gunners, we call them, guys that carried a Mark 48, which is our big heavy weapon, the guys that carry that, when you'd watch them, it's beautiful. It looks the most, it's beautiful. The how quick and how fast and how they combat load that thing and hit the ground and clear reloads, it yeah. was like magic. Yeah. Magic. Love that. Now, there's not just learning about weapons, right? There's other things you got to do. You got to get, you still got to continue to live a hard life. You still got to get mentally and physically conditioned for combat. And what better way to do that than some road marches? Some road marches, which we've talked about many times here. Back to the book. A whole battalion was on the march, and my poor squad was tucked away somewhere at the center or center rear. Clouds of red dust settled upon us. My helmet banged irritably against the machine gun that was boring into my shoulder, or else it was bumped forward, mattingly, over my eyes by the movement of my pack. A mile or so out, I dared not drink any more from my canteen. I had no idea how far we had to go. My dungarees were saturated with sweat, their light green darkened by perspiration. There had been joking and even some singing the first mile out. Now, only the birds sang. 
but from us there was just the thud of feet the clank of canteens the creak of leather rifle slings the occasional hoarse cracking of voice raised and breath wasted in a curse every hour we got a 10 minute break then came the command off and on it means off your behind and on your feet cursing hating both command and commandant straining we rose to our feet and began again the dull plodding rhythm of the march ye old road march <laughs> that's and and so they're doing this type of hard training and they're going they're doing maneuvers they're preparing they're doing mock beach landings they're doing all those things and they're also getting some occasional liberty do you guys know do you know what liberty is as a civilian see so. it's a word that I throw out there sometimes it means time off yeah liberty means time off yeah. and, I don't, and it's 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 from the Navy but the Marine Corps uses it as well it means time off and so these guys even though they're working hard when boot camp you don't get any liberty no mm. you just stay in boot camp for 13 weeks you don't get any liberty mm. in once you're you know a fleet marine or you're in the regular navy you get liberty so you can yeah. go and do you know go out and do some stuff and so these guys are going out and doing stuff and what do you think they're doing 18 years old getting ready to go to war they're going to go out and get after it yeah in a in, a in the kind of classic <laughs> in the classic 18 year old sense of the word actually that's when i got in that context is how I got turned on to the expression, get after it. Oh, from the yeah. context of, of, of going out and partying. Yes, yes, right. exactly. And I don't know if I, partying is what we're talking about. That's a that's a term that, it sounds pretty lame, but that's what we're talking about. I think everybody right. understands that term. Yeah. Drinking, chasing girls, yeah. partying. That's, yeah. what, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. And I guess it's a commonly used term because you hear people say, like I remember seeing an article about some school, some college being the number three ranked party school. Yeah. So, so party implies right. party doesn't imply birthday cake. A party. Yeah. It's party, two party. Party implies drinking, getting yeah. crazy. Yeah. In some but which is different? Drugs. Getting crazy is different from getting nuts, right? No, getting nuts is is fighting for yeah, sure. Yeah, getting nuts is fighting yeah, for yeah. sure it's in fighting. Hawaii. <laughs> yes, yes, it's for sure. All right, so we're just talking about getting, getting crazy and partying, and that's what these guys were doing. Getting after it, yeah. So, here we go back to the book. We were impatient. We were wound up. We could no more relax than we could think. In those days, there was not an introspective person among us. We seldom spoke of, of the war, except as it might relate to ourselves, and in an abstract way. The ethics of Hitler, the extermination of the Jews, the yellow peril, these were matters for the gentlemen of the editorial pages to discuss. We lived for thrills. Not the thrills of the battlefield, but of the speeding auto, the dimly lighted cafe, the drink racing the blood, the texture of a cheek, the sheen of a silken calf. Nothing was permitted to last. All had to be fluid. We wanted not actuality, but possibility. That's a pretty interesting statement. Yeah. We all had to be fluid. We wanted not actually. They didn't actually want that. They wanted to chase that right, thing. Right, right. To chase. We could not be still. Always movement. Everything changing. We were like shadows fleeing, ever fleeing. Condemned men. Souls in hell. Soon the spate of 62-hour liberties was ended. Mid-May of 1942 saw me go home for the last time. My family would not set eyes on me again for nearly three years. And again, obviously there's some very important experiences in that section. That's why you read the book. It's great. It's great to hear his perspective. And you're going to see Robert Lecky. He's a very he's a very intelligent. And he became a writer. I mean, he became a writer. He, this isn't the only book. I think he wrote forty plus books in his life. He worked for big newspapers, and he's a he's a writer. So he's a very smart guy. And and he talks about that, and we'll get to that point in here. But he, that's why his perspective is so interesting, and he brings a lot of that in this book. 